It's a great pleasure to welcome back to What's Next on my broadband, Microsoft. We're going to be talking about Microsoft Dynamics this week. And uh, Corin Jones, the uh, business applications uh, business group for uh, Microsoft here in South Africa, joins us. Nadine Abu Khalil, business applications, customer engagement business lead for Middle East Africa at Microsoft, joins us as well. Ladies, firstly, good morning to you. I know Nadine, I mean, Corin, you're in Johannesburg, but Nadine, where are you? I'm in Dubai, United in Arab Dubai. Emirates. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, it's great to have you both with us, and thank you for joining us. I mean, okay. in, w when you look at uh, where we are today, I mean, in, in today's world customer experience, uh, you know, in today's world, this customer experience is more important than ever before. Now, if you give a customer a great experience, they'll buy more from you. You've seen it. We've seen it. This is how the world operates. They will be more loyal and they will share that experience with their friends and their colleagues. Good customer experience leaves people feeling heard and appreciated. So I'm sure there are a lot of people watching this and listening to me and saying, yes, that's me. It minimizes friction, right? It maximizes efficiency and maintains a human element. So organizations need to get it right to stay competitive. This is the world we're living in. You hear about customer experience over and over again. What sounds, to, what sounds pretty simple, right, seems to be a challenge for many organizations. Let's be honest. It's tough. There are lots of different layers of technology in different organizations. And today, these organizations are confronted with the following trends. And they are very important for trends. I mean, listen to this. The research is showing that one in three customers will leave a brand they love after just one bad experience, while 92% would completely abandon a company after two or three negative interactions. I mean, that's the reality. And, and you're probably nodding. You're saying that's for me as a customer, exactly that. 86% of customers will pay more for a better customer experience. I'm one of those people. So you can understand why customer experience is so important. Now, let me begin by asking you, Nadine. I mean, Nadine, given your experience as a business lead for customer engagement at Microsoft, having worked with many organizations to improve their customer experience, what, in your opinion, is the main challenge for organizations to create a unique customer experience across multiple touch points? Thank you so much, Aki, for the great introduction. Um, across all industries like FSI, professional services, uh, retail, uh, government, you name it, uh, I usually see the same challenges. Uh, main challenge here is that data is trapped in silos. So customers today have more ways to, to engage with organizations, which results, on the other hand, in a higher number of touch points and more data that is being generated. And this leads to organizations having real struggle to, to maintain a 360 degree view of the customer, which requires bringing in each new data uh, or a new source of data, combining data and enriching data for a richer view. On top of that, um, gaining the right insights can also be challenging. We all know and totally understand the importance of personalization, right? However, mm. the possibilities of different ways to address customers increases exponentially, and this creates the need to create a lot of more personalized content for each and every one. Um, but the reality uh, looks completely different. We see organizations having very basic segmentations and executing mass campaigns across different channels that lack insights, especially the predictive ones. And this leads finally to a broken experience because the last mile of personalization requires a precise activation and journey orchestration for real-time decisioning. But le let me give you like an example of my own life, right? So my favorite um, retailer had around 10 different brands. And every time me as an end customer, when I engage with one of those brands, I had to log in into, um, on a different platform, identify myself as a loyal customer, update my address and payment de uh, details, set up my privacy settings, and I still get a complete different and disruptive um, experience across each of, uh, of those brands. I was also not able to shop across these brands and having only one shopping cart and transaction an order. Instead, I had to do it separately, do multiple orders, and accordingly also create several return requests in case something was wrong with my order. And what happened then, and this was 
from an end customer perspective very um, disappointing as well. I started to, to be bombarded on a daily basis with several newsletters with absolute irrelevant promotions where I decided to leave this brand for good. And um, and I'm really sure many of us can uh, or have experienced the same, right? Um, I mean, Karen, we had this discussion last week about your recent service experience, and it was not a fantastic one either, right? Correct, Nadine. It definitely wasn't. Uh, it was with a service provider where I was incorrectly invoiced for a connectivity contract I had renewed. So firstly, they had to correct future invoices, and secondly, they had to reimburse for historic billings. The process was just hugely frustrating, having to call in multiple times to have the issue resolved. No handover between the different agents and calls would drop and I would have to repeat myself because they would not recollect the previous conversations we had. And this went on for months. And to top it all off, I had a telesales engine um, that works for them calling me to offer me an upgrade, which I had already done and for obvious reasons was not happy with. So this talks exactly to what you just mentioned, siloed and disparate data very little or no integration between systems and limited insights into me as a customer. Well, listen, I'm listening to both of you and I'm saying this experience has happened to me as well. I mean, uh, you know, the, the multiple brands is always a challenge eh? and you get bombarded and there's nothing more infuriating than having to replicate the process. And unfortunately, we as customers always remember those bad experiences as I touched on earlier. And you two have just uh, highlighted a great example, which only emphasizes why it's so critical to provide Good customer, ex good customer service, right? Uh, or turn bad experiences around very, very quickly because that's the pro here. If you can turn that experience around quite quickly, that's a good thing. So um, I, I guess, Nadine, what is your expectation uh, as, a, as a customer, uh, as an end customer towards organizations? And how would you define a unique customer experience? Because I think that's an important question. That's a great question. Um, I can, it's in my opinion, very simple, right? Because organizations must know their customers and listen to their customers. And once they know their customers, you need to be consistent and relevant in your messages, right? Uh, engage also whenever a customer wants to engage and do not engage when your customer is not showing any interest here. And I'm referring to my previous newsletter example. From my perspective, I do not expect an organization uh, to, to create constantly a great experience without doing any mistakes. It's not even possible. Mistakes happen, but it's about the ability to turn a bad experience into a fantastic one, and this is possible. Um, let me give you just another example and, and to show you how an organization did this. Um, my luggage was lost during my last trip from Dubai to Germany and the airline contacted me upon landing, landing on the phone to inform me about my lost luggage. And as a woman who never managed to travel light, this is the worst nightmare you can have, right, while traveling. <laughs> but, but in this case, the lady on the phone really managed it so well, showed empathy, which is also rare. Uh, reassured me it's her top priority to find my luggage and in case they won't be able to locate it within two hours she will compensate me with whatever is required well my luggage was located but on the other side of the continent but still i got reassured to receive it in the next morning which was the case yes i had the shock for the moment maybe a bad experience but this lady and this airline in general manage it so well that it's even strengthened my relationship and trust for them to an extent that I'm ready to pay more to, to receive this kind of better service, which is also in line with the statement you made at the beginning of our conversation, right, Aki? Yes, no, absolutely. And you know what? I was busy. I was busy laughing there because I, I this is exactly to what we were talking about, because I want to know which is the airline you were flying with, because yeah. I've had a similar experience where it was complete opposite. Right. Um, and 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 my airline, it was a nightmare. My luggage got lost as well. They didn't seem to care. So I, I want to hear from you, which was the airline you were flying with, because that's who I want to fly with next time. I mean, it, it certainly is clear that a world class customer experience, as the one you've just highlighted, has become, you know, inescapable for organizations. That's what we will ultimately want to strive to achieve, to remain, to remain relevant 
and in the realities that are unfolding in front of us nowadays. And yeah, exactly. I mean, these things happen. How you handle it is what's going to win you over as a customer. And if organizations have not already done so, they should be prioritizing digital transformation because we're now moving into a new era of digital transformation. And this is what's enabling us to provide customers with that consistent, differentiated and top level experiences. So, I mean, Karen, have you had a similar story? I mean, uh, do you agree with what I'm saying about this digital world that we're living in that we all need to transform? You're 100% correct, Aki. And this expectation is not just related to the experience that we've had across the pandemic, by the way. Tech-savvy millennials are quite demanding about their customer experiences. They are often very impatient when it comes to complexity, delays in service delivery, and their loyalty is hard won. I personally expect an individual treatment and I expect service providers to know what my preferences are based on my interaction with them. That's interesting, you know, and, and I, I'm just hearing from you and I think that what I think customers have become more demanding, right? Um, because there's so much competition out there, people have been demanding, they're paying for something, they expect to get the service they want. Now, in, in light of that, Karen, what should customers be considering or, or how should they be going about this? Well, if I'm a retailer, Aki, um, as an example, I would be thinking about store transformation. That would include information kiosks to make things easier to find, efficient queue management to improve the customer pay experience. I mean, we all hate those long and lengthy queues. And appealing and conveniently accessible mer merchandise displays. So, and similarly, if I were a bank, I would be thinking of enabling an omni-channel type of environment which gives customers options by which they can interact with them. So either via the phone, the PC, other smart devices. And aligned to that, they should be simplified and easy to use products and the support channels that goes with that. In fact, I have two real examples of organizations here in South Africa who had embarked on that journey recently. Uh, Signature Cosmetics realized within weeks of the lockdown being imposed in South Africa, that a shift in strategy was necessary. In partnership with a Microsoft partner, they decided to reprioritize the ERP and retail implementation midstream into one that focused on e-commerce. Signature was online and ready to trade as soon as the restrictions on e-commerce were lifted in South Africa. And the move delighted customers who, of course, reported they had long been waiting for an online shopping experience. An online uptake grew revenue from zero sales early in the lockdown period to 20 to 30% in the first few months. That is phenomenal. Wow. Another one is Investec, who set out to improve the management of their data sales conversations. They implemented the sales insights add-in for Microsoft Dynamics 365 sales, focusing on the application's conversation intelligence capability. Now, feedback directly from the customer was that by leveraging this technology, they cannot easily drill down for more detail to make perfect sense of the information they're given. I really love those customer examples. Sorry, Aki, but I'm well, those excited are about these great results, examples, right? Though, maybe. Uh, because it really proves uh, the real need of a digital transformation in a an, uh, an time that is very uncertain or in a time of change, right? And I'm very proud being with Microsoft um, that, that Microsoft was and is still a trusted advisor for those customers mm -hmm. uh, and supporting them in their journeys. This is fantastic. Um, Investec is also a fantastic example because it's showing us uh, that digital banking is, is a reality worldwide. And this is uh, something Brett King has spoken uh, about it in our um, industry boardroom two weeks ago. Worldwide, 66% of the banks are digital only. And it has been proven that the fastest growing FIs are all digital. I mean, this is amazing trend. So think about some of the banks we are still dealing with today. How many are still issuing physical uh, cards to access services? How many banks expect you to visit their branches to get some paperwork done? It's unbelievable. Mm. On the other hand, look at the end customers. Look at us. How many individuals are still using their wallets and physical credit cards when going out? I don't. Maybe you don't either, right? Should we not be considering more of the e-wallet type services or services based on what a customer wants and when they want it? I mean, this is a question everyone needs to ask. 
these trends are or should be top of mind, especially when it comes to the financial sector. And um, the disruption here is real and digital banking is already a reality. And we need to act today, not only to be competitive, but in order to survive and thrive. At the same time, I really believe it's an exciting time to be that in that industry and being part of an era that creates innovation of a daily basis. You just need to have the right technology partner to realize this innovation for yourself as well. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you, you, you speak about these banks and as you were talking, um, I, I, in the last few months, on the amount of times I've actually forgotten to take my wallet with me when I go shopping because I'm so accustomed to tapping my phone when I'm paying for something. So just to your point, there's been such a massive shift that's happened. Uh, and, and I think the pandemic has spurred a lot of this on. I, I do think, though, that most business leaders really understand the importance of this digital transformation that we're talking about and de delivering a world-class customer experience. However, they face numerous challenges in realizing their customer experience goals. Operational challenges, for example, such as coordinating across various functions and departments. There's a lot of complexity out there and it can be handled by taking certain corrective actions, I guess, to do this. But strategic challenges run a lot deeper and they need to be addressed by senior leaders. So, Corin, how should organizations be thinking about this? They're listening to us right now and they're saying, we need to make changes. How should they be thinking about this? 100% Aki, and there's a few areas that come to mind for me that organizations should be considering. First is having a strategy that's relevant to them, including aligned KPIs. For some organizations, these could include customer acquisition, retention, loyalty, customer satisfaction, of course, is key, and then revenue KPIs. Next is data. Know what data you have and analyze it to provide actionable insights. Data will allow you to have a 360 degree view of a customer, which makes it easier for you to service them. Technology is another critical um, component to this journey, including machine learning and AI capabilities. You know, most customers have made some kind of investment in technology, but they need to consider and acknowledge that they more than likely will not find all the tools and all the capabilities with one single vendor. So they should strongly consider integration points in order to deliver a holistic solution and experience. And then having the correct implementation partner to support them throughout the journey is almost a must have, as Nadine just mentioned. Then having the correct implementation partner to support them throughout the journey is almost a must have, as Nadine just mentioned. And what is quite critical is none of this really works well if there's no organizational change. The organization and the people or employees have to be taken on this journey from day one. And then lastly, you know, Aki, digital transformation is not binary. It is not all or nothing. It can be done incrementally, but the key is to start. Well, certainly all very relevant points for consideration. Now, this organization, organizational change rather is an interesting one, as well as this notion of a hybrid workplace, right? We hear more and more often about this hybrid workplace. Don't you ladies love all these buzzwords that are coming up this year? I mean, what are your thoughts on how this influences or impacts employees and customer experience and how organizations should be thinking about this going forward? This is so relevant, Aki. Employee empowerment is essential if an innovation culture is to be established as part of digital transformation. In a recent study conducted by IDC focusing on the retail industry in South Africa, it was evident that successful customer-driven retailers are currently planning to invest in employee experience and enablement to improve the customer experience. This includes equipping the in-store staff with new technologies like mobile workforce devices to empower them to deliver a better in-store experience, as well as the availability of a mobile point of sale type systems. In addition, many customers deployed or accelerated the use of collaborative tools during the pandemic to support their distributed workforces. And given that we are all talking about hybrid being the new norm, these collaborative tools will continue to provide the flexibility that will allow employees to work from anywhere, again, improve, improving that employee well-being in the process. 
great point that you are raising, Karen. In fact, we are seeing businesses across industries who are experiencing a tectonic shift in how, when and where people work. In today's decentralized workplace, everyone needs just simple ways to connect, share ideas, uh, collaborate wherever they are located. You are in uh, Johannesburg, Karen. Myself, we are, I'm, I'm based in Dubai, right? And we are collaborating on a daily basis and it's working perfectly. And that's also why Microsoft saw this trend and announced Context IQ, a set of capabilities that integrate um, collaboration into the flow of work, surfacing the information, people and insights in the moment in context with the task at hand. These capabilities help every organization to build a hyper-connected business that empowers people to collaborate as one business everywhere, so people can thrive wherever and however they work. At the same time, organizations need to make sure that they listen to their employees and empower their employees with a flexible working culture, but also with the right technology that makes their life easier when it comes to user experience and when it comes to simple access of data and insights. Why is this important? Because there is a clear connection between employee experience and customer experience. And I do believe that we as end customers and humans, we notice this level of happiness and motivation in every situation where we have a service, uh, service agent on the phone or being served in a shop. Yeah, no, this is not surprising once again that uh, technology is providing the platform to enable this, right? And that the organizational change management to enable this is really extremely important. Um, and it's absolutely fascinating just listening to these kind of uh, scenarios you're both painting, and I'm really enjoying this, this conversation. Nadine, are there any final thoughts that you have on this? Because there, there's just so many things that are bouncing in my head. I'd love to know your final thoughts. Thank you, Aki. I love the discussion as well. And uh, in my role as business lead for customer engagement solutions at Microsoft, I'm also very well aware of the challenges organizations are facing, especially when it comes to siloed data, siloed system, and the struggle to get the right insights. However, I don't want them to, to fear um, because of it. I want them to see the massive opportunities that lies ahead of them if organizations are doing it the right way, which is essential to stay competitive. So what's important? I want to re-emphasize on the importance of getting a 360 degree view of the customer to know and understand your customers better. Once you know your customers, you will be able to personalize every interaction across every single touch point. And we understood from today's conversation how important this is. On top of that, organizations need to leverage um, artificial intelligence and machine learning for advanced predictive analytics, because it's not only about what the customer wants today, but also what he might need in the future. And last but not least, empower your teams with the right tools at the right time to guide and collaborate with customers remotely. With the right technology, we can enable them to drive meaningful action and maximize engagement by focusing on what matters most, their customers. So you see there are a lot of opportunities and possibilities to, to leverage, right? Um, and we from Microsoft are more than happy to guide uh, organizations uh, through their personal digital transformation journey. So many important things to think about in this data world that we're living in and uh, using the right technology to get that right customer experience. And today we discussed the importance of customer experience and the right level of engagement across all industries, especially from an end customer perspective. We learned the importance of data and insights when it comes to having a 360 degree view of your customers, which helps organizations across all industries to personalize every single interaction and to support customers with current and future needs and accommodate big life-changing moments. Now, in order to do so, it's more than important to proactively listen and respond to customer feedback and to quickly tailor next best actions based on insights captured directly from your customers. And at the same time, we need to make sure we listen to our employees, give them room and give them an opportunity to engage and adapt and in a diverse and inclusive culture that impacts not only on their experience, but also the ones 
of our end customers as well. Now, we also discussed on how to enable that connected service experience in order to quickly adjust to a changing environment with digital engagement and self-service and enable contact center employees to provide consistent, personalized support while working remotely. And last, but by no means least, as we heard it straight from the subject matter experts, the disruption is real and the digital era is already a reality. So we need to act today, not only to be competitive, but in order to survive and thrive into the future. So Corin Jones, business application business group lead at Microsoft South Africa, thank you for your time. Nadine Abu Khalil, business applications customer engagement business lead, joining us all the way from Dubai. Thank you for your time, ladies, and thank you for this most enlightening conversation. And I certainly can relate to so many things that you raised about customer experience as a customer myself, and especially the one you said about the queues. I hate queues. Thank you for your time, ladies. Thank you. Thanks, Aki. So much, Aki. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Aideen. Thank you, Karen and Aki. Have a great thank day. Thank you.